Shalom, covering him. I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, we've got a very interesting broadcast this evening for you. Uh, of course, the title that we had on our uh, PowerPoint here is Follow the Money. But quite frankly, we're going to be looking at the end of the broadcast here. Very serious situation there in the Middle East there. Uh, that is inevitably going to turn into a massive war in the in the Middle East. Damascus definitely is going to be destroyed in this war, uh, and we're going to we're going to conclude in our broadcast with that. But let's first get started right on into the broadcast here. Uh, President Edgar Lungu, uh, this we caught him ourselves in Paris here. We caught several photographs there. Uh, he was in a heavily heavily guarded convoy there. He had just come from Rome. He had been in Rome the day before. We had been in Rome, uh, in fact, probably the same time he was there. Uh, I'd seen one diplomat coming out of the Vatican there, wondered who it was. Uh, may very well have been uh, Mr. Uh, Lungu, not sure of that, but we did catch him and were able to get uh, several photographs of him, even his wife. Uh, while he was in Paris, France. But I could not help but wonder, though, why such a celebrity status? I mean, the amount of security this man has is unbelievable. And it's quite clear that the Vatican wants to keep this man in power in Zambia. Zambia is where he is the president of in South Africa. And, uh, and he is a very, very... Uh, loved figure by Pope Francis here. Again, another photo we took ourselves of the Pope while we were in Rome. But one thing that was interesting, though, I saw one of the photographs where Pope Francis, when he met with President uh, Lungu, uh, Edgar Lungu there, he was ecstatic over meeting this man. And so I could not help but wonder, why is there such an interest in this particular uh, president. He's considered to be a very timid man. Uh, and as I begin to look into this, the article here, this was on uh, Vatican News here, in the library, the Pope Francis held a closed-door meeting uh, with Mr. Lungu that lasted about 25 minutes. Uh, later, the Vatican Press Office released a statement saying that the discussions uh, were cordial and about the good relations between the Holy See, the Republic of Zambia, also discussed were the contributions uh, of the Catholic Church in Zambia through involvement in the educational, social, and health care reforms, etc. Uh, and so I'm wondering then, what is it? Zambia has to be a contributing factor somewhere for the Pope of Rome to be so excited about this man to be in power. And by the way, there was recently discovered diamonds. Now, there's been a lot of illegal diamond trade for a long time in Zambia uh, through a lot of smuggling, etc., especially on the uh, border of Angola. But uh, recently, the, a Chinese uh, uh, mining company discovered a very, very valuable cache of diamonds in the region there, so much that it made headlines. Uh, Anyway, continuing on, though, Vatican News said the statement further said, attention that turned to the themes of common interests, including migration, climate change, and the protection of the environment. Finally, Pope Francis and Mr. Longer discussed the inter international situation with the focus on conflicts that affect various areas of Africa. Uh, and President Longo was in the afternoon expected to hold talks with the Food and Agricultural Organization and the International Fund for Agricultural Development. So there is a strong tie there with the Vatican. I thought it was interesting that they got into climate change. But, by the way, if you're following the thing on Planet X, which we are going to finish this up, maybe a couple of weeks out before I can get back onto this project here. But oddly enough, if you look at the different... Uh, maps that speak about what will it be like after Planet X passes. Well, Zambia happens to be one of those places that do survive and fare very well. Maybe this is another reason why they like this particular part of the world. Not to mention the oil reserves that were discovered in 2006, as well as the diamond, new cache of diamonds that have been discovered in 2015, back in January. Now, I might add to you, though, yes, there has been... Uh, oil discovered there, 
But don't kid yourself, both Shell and Gulf Oil International have made sure they've gotten their fair share for the Pope to get the revenues building great in the Vatican there. But also the Chinese firm finds the diamonds in, in uh, Mabala. Uh, this was what we were speaking about earlier, the article there, the Chinese exploration for diamonds has found samples that indicate that Zambia has high grade diamonds in comparison to that of South African diamond mines. He said he urged government to ensure that the law is worked out on time to enable investors to come and invest in the diamond mines in the Northern Circuit. And notice the, the little wording in there. Get the things in the government straightened out so investors can come and do the investment. Well, they're planning on doing just that. Don't kid yourself at all. Again, like I said, oil and gas was discovered in 2006 um, in Zambia. And, but this is what I found very interesting. They want to make sure that the government has everything worked out for the investors and time for the investors. Well, this was back in the beginning of January of 2015 that the, the Chinese discovered this and made this statement here with the mining companies. When he meets, though, the Pope of Rome, uh, Mr. Longu there, not long here, we also find, too, in September, a few months ago, that the mining companies were meeting with the Pope of Rome as well. I guess everybody's going to get a piece of the pie in this. Uh, this here, this article here, Mining Chiefs Seek the Pope's Blessing. Now, I forgot to put the, the, the source of which article this was from on here, but it is September 18th, 2015. That is the title of the article, so you can Google it and pull it up yourself. But here's what it states in part of the article. If the mining industry wants to try to get something done these days, there is a new door to knock on. The Pope's. I mean, can you believe the absurdity of this report? If you want to get something done in mining, there is a new door to knock on, and that's the Pope's door. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, Mark Katapani, chief executive of Anglo-American, said the Catholic Church is very heavily involved with a number of NGOs that are engaged with the mining industry. This is all about being able to tell our story and getting a fair hearing for the industry. Is the Vatican actually a court that, that determines whether or not your mining is affecting global climate change? Or is it really what the global thing is all about is Planet X anyway, and whether or not your work is going to be important for when Planet X comes by to sustain the new world economy after the world is in chaos? I mean, it's all kind of speculation, guys. I'm just throwing some thoughts out there for our future look into this. Anyway, continuing on in the same article, it says, Anglo and other miners have also taken Catholic leaders to visit mines in South Africa and elsewhere. Catholic leaders visiting the mines? Watch what he says. Mr. Katafani said, It is really encouraging quite a few places. We have, we have members of the clergy coming to us and asking about investment. These are people who are important in their communities, and so we need to get them interested in what mining is about. They want to know about investment. Well, what do you know? Don't worry. They're making sure the Pope gets his cut. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. Anyway, for those of you that don't already know, Europe has been embroiled in protests this weekend, Saturday, uh, Protests all across Europe, even in the Czech Republic, back where uh, we are stationed at there. My father-in-law told us about uh, it kind of got nuts there in, in Prague there. Protesters for the, uh, the immigrants, protesters against the immigrants, clashed with each other, clashed with police, and it's happened all over uh, Europe. Uh, in practically every single nation, there has been protests. Even uh, as this, of course, a photo here are people that are in support of the, of the immigrants, uh, etc. Uh, and, and for myself, I'm kind of like divided on the issue. I do not support the crime and the problems that are coming with all of this. I think that as long as the police can do their job in enforcing the laws of the land, then 
that would help it. But unfortunately, in many cases, we're hearing police are being made to silence the crimes that go on, turn the other cheek, so to speak. And this is something that cannot happen whatsoever. Uh, at the same time, we know that there are just radicals among these uh, these migrants that are in the different lands that cause nothing but chaos. Uh, but unfortunately, there are many, though, that, are, that have come that never wanted to leave their home countries, uh, whether it be Syria or, or Iraq, uh, where, where their countries are being totally obliterated by NATO and their allies, and as well as Russia's bombing campaign against ISIS and the militants there. So nonetheless, there are these people are displaced not of their own court but the protests uh, have been going on like nuts there uh, this here uh, photograph we just share with you ourselves here we were on our way out of paris headed to calais uh, and you can see uh, maybe not too well in the photograph here with the way the camera is on this but uh, there were just all kinds of Syrian refugees uh, on the inter interstate itself before it goes into the main highway there because the traffic comes to a crawl, uh, looking for people to help, financially needing, hoping that people will give them some kind of help. Uh, many of them families trying to get some kind of help in a desperate situation they were in. Uh, the photo only shows one side. They were both sides of the street there. Uh, not forcibly or anything like that, just holding signs up, please help, uh, and you know, people, you would see different people that would help along that way. Uh, Calais Franco, that was a very interesting situation. We tried to get to the refugee uh, uh, part there, were totally unable to. The police stopped us, did not allow us to get in. Uh, it was a very tight security. They said they were having a lot of problems with the refugees there in Calais. Uh, we do know that there's been reports all over the news that different refugees have escaped from the different camp areas in different parts of Europe. Uh, and as well, there have been uh, refugees seen on the sides of the road trying to get on trains, trying to get in cars to get into to England, etc. Very, very uh, desperate situation there. Uh, we had actually photographed a new camp that appears to be being prepared for refugees. Uh, just hundreds and hundreds of tents here, right near the highway there, just uh, maybe about 20 or so kilometers, 10 kilometers outside of Calais. Um, you know, there's just, it is a desperate, desperate situation to say the very least there. Going on into our uh, the final closing news here that I wanted to bring to your attention, and this is where I am very concerned about the situation that is going on in the Middle East, uh, uh, especially in light of the Arabic nations, the, uh, the, the, uh, the United Arab Emirates have, uh, have now started getting involved in this as well. But uh, we are about to see an all-out war break loose there. Russia there uh, will definitely end up being involved in this. Iran, NATO, their allies, all the United Arab Emirates, uh, the, the, Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar, all these countries are about ready to go to war. Now their claim is to put boots on the ground against ISIS, but we know that's not really what it's going to be. Let me give you some interesting news off of RT here real quick. Uh, this was another issue, and this is only showing the, inf uh, the inflammatory uh, situation between Russia and NATO. Uh, in this case here, this was on an article RT News on uh, today, not, not Russia but NATO's incursion in the Middle East to blame for Syrian crisis. This is what Moscow is saying there. It says, if anybody in Syria is, is tense today because of the actions of the Russian airspace forces in Syria, it is the terrorists, he stressed. Uh, and by the way, that was uh, Sergei, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Kanashkanov, who actually made the statement of the Russian uh, Foreign Ministry, uh, Foreign Defense Ministry, that is. Anyway, it says, as why the NATO countries feel as tense as the terrorists, it is a question to be addressed uh, to Stoltenberg himself. Stoltenberg being uh, the, Swedish, uh, uh, the Swedish man that is uh, with uh, the, uh, NATO's uh, defense part of the Allies. He has been accusing Russia of uh, causing, basically, the refugee crisis. Now, that's kind of absurd 
when you think about it, because the refugee crisis began before Russia began its own bombing campaign there. Not to say that Russia is not contributing, because absolutely, the more this nation is bombed, the more the refugees are going to flee. What else do they have to do? They have no homes left. They have bombs dropping around every day. I mean, if, we have to think seriously, friends. If we were living in a neighborhood, and in our neighborhood, bombs are being dropped in our neighborhood, even if our house isn't hit, do you think you're going to just stay living in the house? Or are you going to get out of Dodge while you can get out of Dodge? Because your house may be hit while you're in it one day. So uh, this is the situation. And Turkey doesn't want the refugees. Saudi Arabia doesn't want these refugees. And these, of course, these refugees know this. So their hope is, in many cases, get to England. England has the best uh, refugee plan there is on planet Earth. You get there, you're going to get all kind of government assistance. Of course, it'll end up bankrupting England when it comes down to it. But we'll just have to see how that goes. Anyway, though, uh, a lot of war, war of words here between Russia and uh, 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 Stoltenberg, uh, Swedish uh, guy there over NATO, says here, the spokesman reminded of the openness with the which, which, which Russia's air operation in Syria is being carried out, including daily briefings and release of video and photos. We would like to remind Mr. Stoltenberg that it is not the Russian Air Force Forces operations which are a source of the crisis in Syria, but the reckless actions of NATO that plunged the whole Middle Eastern region into chaos. Well, he's right. You have to admit it. It's true. And, and this is another reason why you see such tensions even in Europe here, because these refugees know NATO started this mess. And they're there because the United States led uh, a campaign against the, the, the Syrian uh, President Bashar al-Assad to try to topple him. The wars, the inciting violence, uh, arming the rebels, arming the ISIS group, Turkey arming ISIS for sure now, it's just totally destabilized the region. And now these refugees, they've come to Europe and they're not very happy in the first place, uh, to say the least. And they've already got a pretty radical religion on top of it. So you combine all that together. Uh, those that are just trying to deal with it, but then you have a situation that could lead to more problems, especially in the desperate situation that they are in at this particular time there. Uh, anyway, continuing on there. Oh, wow. How did we go backwards here? That's kind of strange here. Give me one second, friends, here. Let me get this going. There we go. We're going back forward again. So anyway, the UAE joins, another article here on RT, uh, joins chorus of the Arab monarchies ready to invade Syria. This is what is on the news today. This, my friends, is what I am very, very concerned about. We know the prophecies. Damascus will, shall, will be a ruinous heap. Now, I don't have the scripture in front of me. I wish I did because it's like a two phases of Damascus. It's like it ceases to be in a city and it shall be a ruinous heap. It first is going to cease as being a city. Now, we could arguably say right now Damascus has already ceased from being a city, technically speaking, because it is in such shambles there. But there are parts of Damascus that are still pretty much running as normal. But there's going to come a time for sure, though, that Damascus is going to totally cease as being a city, and it will become a ruinous heap. A lot of people have thought this is going to be, uh, you know, some kind of nuclear bomb. I don't believe that. Now that we've watched what has happened in Syria and all the surrounding uh, cities around Damascus have become nothing but piles of rubble, totally ceased from being cities, and their people fulfilling prophecy constantly... We've seen Micah chapter, what was it, chapter 6, I believe it was, or chapter 7, where it speaks about that they would, they would uh, that the people themselves would cause their own, uh, the, the, the land would become desolate as a result of their own people. And that, why is that? That's because the United States and Turkey trained the ISIS militants that were radicals, trained them in order to turn on Bashar al-Assad. And so it was through the efforts of the U.S. and Turkey arming ISIS and training them and to bring in the, uh, as they call it, the moderate rebels, 
Rebels, as I thought Russia says, what do you consider moderate? Rebels are rebels. They're there to try to overthrow Russia al Assad, and yet President Putin is there to try to keep him in power. So it's just, it is a major catastrophe in this country right now. And now we have the United Arab Emirates saying, joining that they will join in with Saudi Arabia and the other forces on a ground invasion. Now, watch what it says. Following in the footsteps of Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates stated on Sunday that it was ready to ground troops to Syria to fight Islamic State. Damascus earlier said it would send unwelcome invaders back in coffins. Now that is some st strong language right there. Damascus has sent a warning. That's to Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates. If you come into our country, you're going back in coffins. Friends, that, that's war. And Russia is going to get caught up right in the middle of it. And Iran is pledging to back Damascus. Watch what, he, what it says here. The UAE... Preparedness to participate in a ground military operation in Syria was confirmed by Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Anwar Gargash, who said that U.S. leadership on this would be a prerequisite. In other words, they ain't going to do it unless they got the U.S. They want the U.S. to be there to bomb Russia if they go in there to try to take Syria for them. All right? So we are not talking about thousands of troops, but we are talking about Troops on the ground that will lead the way, that will support, and, uh, and I think our position remains the same, and we will have to see how this progresses, he added, as uh, cited by Reuters there. All right, now, continuing on in the same article. The Syrian government warned that any foreign army entering Syria without an invitation would be considered an enemy and a resistant let no one think they can attack Syria or violate its sovereignty because I assure you any aggressor will return to their country in a wooden coffin, Syrian Foreign Minister Walid Mudleb said on Saturday. All right. Iran, the key regional ally of Damascus and a rival of Saudi Arabia, said Riyadh lacked the courage to deliver on the premise. Okay. Uh, it says, the Saudis have made such a claim, but I don't think they are brave enough to do so. Even if they send troops, they would be definitely defeated. It would be suicide, Iran's Revolutionary Guards Commander Muhammad Ali uh, Yarafi, Yarafi said. So, Iran now is definitely openly saying they're going to back Syria. Russia is there to back Syria. But the problem is, is Russia has kind of been very cautious in bombing anyone that is affiliated with the United States because they're trying to avoid that particular confrontation. But yet the United States says that Russia has bombed some of the, uh, the uh, light rebel forces. You gotta understand, if Russia is there to protect Bashar al-Assad, they're either there to protect him or they're there for their own interest. If that's the case, Russia could just go ahead and overthrow Bashar al-Assad, take the land for themselves. But then they certainly end up in an all-out war with NATO and the United States as well. Friends, this is a very serious situation, extremely. I do believe we're seeing Daniel chapter 11, and I still, I have been praying about it, trying to understand how the players work in on this. I know that there's already people that already say they already know the king of the north is, king of the south, etc. I'm not fully persuaded on this. And until God reveals it, I can't really just speak uh, or venture without authority, you might say. I've got to know what God's mind is on this. But I do believe that we're seeing the king of the south and the king of the north. I believe the king of the north is the Vatican. I believe that's NATO, their allies, their troops. They come in like a whirlwind. I do believe that. But I'm still got some reservations because I can't quite figure out how do you play out the king of the south in all of this. I thought of all kinds of things. I thought of Saudi Arabia. I thought of uh, Damascus even, for that matter. But I can't really place how this works. And as it, it appears to be, though, it is also progressive over time in Daniel chapter 11. Uh, so, again, 
we are definitely going to see prophecy fulfilled. Though. We're going to see Damascus a ruinous heap, ceasing to be a city and becoming a ruinous heap. I tell you what, friends, it's a serious hour that we're living in. I want to thank you for those of you that have been supporting this broadcast. We do need your help. Uh, it is a cost-draining mission that we are on. We still have a lot of work to do here, uh, and we want to continue on. So if you want to stand with this type of news broadcast, Israeli News Live, uh, for your prophetic insights, stand with us and support this broadcast. You can do so by going to IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. You'll see these on your screen here and be a part of this work. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we'll be giving you more updates here in the next days as we go along. God bless you. Shalom. Thank you.